Mike Florio joins us from Pro Football Talk, NBC Sports, the author of a book football fans really need to get playmakers, how the NFL works and how it doesn't. And Mike, we are sitting waiting for the NFL right now. We're on pins and needles here in Cleveland, watching the Deshaun Watson case and those numbers that have changed dramatically in the last four or five days. Where do you think the landscape is right now in regards to the NFL ready the readying themselves to come down with a decision? Well, the NFL likes to wait as long as it possibly can to make any of these decisions. It has learned the hard way by its mistakes to not do anything prematurely. And I recall just a couple of weeks ago believing that the Friday of Memorial Day weekend would have been the perfect time for the NFL to initiate what basically is a three-step process in proposing discipline then it goes to a disciplinary officer who makes the final decision, which is only final until Roger Goodell has an opportunity to exercise appeal jurisdiction. I thought that Friday would be a good time to start the process if the idea is to let the Browns know when and if their quarterback is going to be suspended. But what we've seen since that Friday, we've seen a 23rd lawsuit filed. We've heard some unfortunate comments from his attorney, Rusty Harden, trying to normalize the practice of having a massage become a sexual encounter. We saw a 24th lawsuit, and then we saw the New York Times article that contains all sorts of new information that just makes it feel like Deshaun Watson is losing worse than ever in the court of public opinion. So where we stand now, I think the NFL has a big decision to make, obviously. But the threshold question is, do we proceed with some sort of discipline against Deshaun Watson, not knowing what else may happen after we commence that process, or do we just put him on paid leave? I know the commissioner took the possibility of paid leave off the table in March, but the circumstances have changed since the commissioner said that. And I'm starting to think the best way for the league to handle this, and maybe the best interest of Deshaun Watson, definitely not the Browns, but the best interest of Deshaun Watson could be for him to step away and focus on getting these 24 cases resolved so everyone knows what the final outcome is and then the Browns, the league, and Watson can move forward whenever that may be. Mike, do you think the Browns and quite possibly Rusty Harden and Watson's legal team, do you think they were surprised at the new numbers that came out, the 24th lawsuit, which it appears they were surprised at, but the 66 uh, therapists mentioned in the New York Times article? I don't know how much of the discovery process had transpired in the litigation before we got to the point where the Browns traded for Deshaun Watson. And I don't know how much other information they had access to, but to the extent that Rusty Harden's statement on Monday was that I can't respond to the 24th lawsuit because we didn't know this person's name before today. That to me is jarring because now we see what happens when you wait and you monitor and potentially someone else comes out of the woodwork and adds to this litany of cases especially since there's a possibility if this person is a new complainant, Mm -hmm. a new alleged victim, she could go and file a criminal complaint and there could be another grand jury process that commences. So that to me, of all the things that have happened over the course of the past two weeks with plenty of troubling developments, I think the most troubling is a 24th lawsuit from someone that they didn't know about until the lawsuit was filed. Mike, I've been out at all of their OTA practices Visually, it's incredible watching him play with the talent that the Browns have around him. But there is a real suppressed excitement around Cleveland because here you finally have what we believe is the elite quarterback that this organization has been looking for for decades. And there's that big but. But is he going to be able to play? When are we going to be able to see him? So you can understand that, right? Oh, I understand it completely. And look, the moment that the trade happened, I began to advocate And I've been advocating since March of 2021 that these cases should be resolved, not in the way that you write a check and make it go away, but you have a reckoning. You understand what you did to cause these cases to be filed. The people who filed the cases end up, as the process concludes, believing that they've achieved some sort of justice. And then you move on. You deal with it properly and you move on. They could have done it in April of 2021. It fell apart over whether or not the amount of the settlements and the associated facts would be treated as confidential. Deshaun Watson's camp wanted it all to be out in the public. I think they wanted to be able to to do a victory lap on how little they paid to end the cases. Then as of last year, late last year, during the season, it was $100,000 per plaintiff 
to resolve the cases so he could be traded to the Dolphins. When he was traded to the Browns, I said, and this was something reflecting what I think Browns fans should want. You want to avoid this burden of being Mm -hmm. a fan of a team whose starting quarterback has all of this uncertainty and all of these cases pending. And for some fans, you naturally end up in a position where you find yourself defending him, fighting Mm -hmm. back, pushing against any of these developments because he's our quarterback. Mm -hmm. The fans should not be in this position. Deshaun Watson put them in that position, and the Browns did as well, but Watson could have and should have settled the cases as his first order of business when he became a member of the Browns. Mike, if this goes dramatically south and he is suspended for the entire year, if he is suspended for a long time with no definite date of when he'd be able to come back, could this historically go down as one of the all-time worst trades in NFL history, if not sports history? Well, it's tough to top the Herschel Walker trade from 1989, but if at the end of the day the Browns pay him two or three years, and at some point there will be an unpaid suspension, I assume, but if they pay him all of this year and into next year while these cases are still pending and they don't get any value from him or he doesn't play this year, and by the time he plays next year he's dramatically lost – his abilities. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that that there already is plenty of regret within the Browns organization. They wouldn't admit it, but I suspect if they could go back and do it again, maybe they would pass on trading for Deshaun Watson. I just feel like the four teams that pursued him got so caught up in that competitive aspect of being right. the team that gets Deshaun Watson. There were a lot of things that weren't really considered as carefully as they could be about how the world will unfold after this trade happens and yeah look if 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 he misses all of this year and some most or all of next year and and gets paid most of his money I, I don't know how you feel good about that trade unless when he comes back they are appearing in and potentially winning Super Bowls and I think that's what the ba- Browns are banking on whenever he does play he mm-hmm. makes them a Super Bowl contender, and that will make everyone forget everything that happened. Mike, we've been playing the numbers game, uh, and everybody that's been watching this case has been playing the numbers game of suspension. And there was the Roethlisberger formula, six games appealed and got it down to four. Um, and so a lot of people were saying, well, if it's four games, we can deal with that, especially looking at the front of their schedule. But are we looking realistically bigger numbers now, longer suspension? I really believe that we are looking at a longer suspension, whether it's paid leave or unpaid leave. The first moment for me that I really started to think it's going to be significant and not a Ben Roethlisberger situation was when Major League Baseball suspended Trevor Bauer two years for something that isn't identical but similar. Whether to what extent consent within the confines of potential sexual activity was violated by a professional athlete. That's where there's similarity. And the blowback to that, I mean, there really wasn't any. There weren't people saying, I can't believe Major League Baseball would impose a two-year suspension on someone for activities completely beyond the diamond, completely off the job. It has nothing to do with his job. It has nothing to do with his team. And he's still got two years and nobody said boo. And I think it's relevant because that changes the expectations of the public. And at the end of the day, the personal conduct policy, it, it isn't a justice system. It's a device for ensuring that whatever the NFL does to a player who gets in trouble away from work meshes with public expectations. And that's when I thought, well, there's a chance he's going to get suspended the whole year because there are 22 of these allegations. Now there are 24. Mm -hmm. Now it's taken more of a turn toward having a more ominous feel. That's why I think paid leave should be back on the table. I've asked the league twice this week Mm -hmm. whether Roger Goodell's comments from late March about paid leave not being an option still stand. Both times they said no comment. Now, Mm -hmm. you can take that however you want, but how hard would it be to say his comments still stand? Mike, yesterday the Browns said and came out and stated that a mutual agreement, sort of, I guess, uh, that Baker Mayfield will not come to the mandatory minicamp. To me, that just means the door is really shut with the Browns and Baker Mayfield. What do you think? Oh, I think the door is shut. I think they recognize the bridge isn't burned. It's obliterated. It's in smithereens. And it all happened. And and look, the foundation was already in place, but it really happened during this failed or this successful pursuit 
of Deshaun Watts. They tell Baker Mayfield at the end of the season, you're our guy. Then they tell his agents, you're our guy, unless we get Deshaun Watson or Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. And then they try to get Deshaun Watts. And then someone leaks to Chris Mortensen of ESPN that they want an adult in the room with the position. It's over. It's done. I, I think that they maybe were concerned that he was going to show up for mandatory minicamp, even if they didn't want him there. I think that's why Kevin Stefanski initially said this week, no comment on the possibility of Baker Mayfield being excused from the minicamp, because if he wants to be there, mm-hmm. if he wants to show up, he has every right to be there. And the only way to keep him out is to cut him or trade him. And I think that's what training camp now is setting up to be. They may try to finesse this so he doesn't show up. The question is, will he say, I have every right to be there. You've got to deal with me. And if you don't want me there, trade me or cut me. All right, another point on that. Let's just take him out of the equation, and I think you're right. It, it's been blown to smithereens there. But if they get to training camp and they know the Watson decision, they would be basically on paper going in with Jacoby Brissett and Josh Dobbs behind him. Would you then think they would be out in the market looking for somebody else? Well, I think that's why it's important for the Browns to know sooner rather than later what Deshaun Watson's availability is going to be so they can plan accordingly. And every time I say that, I get pushback from people saying, hey, the Browns knew what they were getting into mm-hmm. when they traded for the guy. But at some point, it's fair to expect some clarity as to what is going to happen, whether it's from the Browns' perspective, their opponent's perspective, all the sports books out there that partner with the NFL that would like to put the Browns' futures bets back on the board. I think at some point, you just have to know what's going on. And at that point, I've said this a few times, and whether or not it ultimately happens, we'll see. Trade Baker Mayfield to the Panthers straight up for Sam Darnold, make him the guy for 2022. If the bridge is burned with Baker Mayfield, they're making the same salary. Swap them out. We know the Panthers have interest in Baker Mayfield. Swap out the two and go forward with Sam Darnold and try to make it work and make him the guy until Deshaun Watson is able to come back, assuming he can even come back in 2023, if that's the way this is headed. Playmakers, um, Father's Day's coming up. Okay, it's on my list. Uh, how the NFL works and how it doesn't. Uh, tell us a little sketch about the book. Well, what it does is it takes a look at the past 20 years in the NFL from the standpoint of all of the various anecdotes, controversies, stories that registered broadly on the radar screen and some that maybe fell off the radar screen. But when you piece it together, it's kind of a mosaic. Somebody used that word once and I've, I've stolen it and used it to describe the book ever since. It's a mosaic when you look at all of the essays. They're all short, so they're conducive to somebody with a short attention span like me. You can read any of them, some of them, all of them. You can go out of order, but when you look at all of it together, it does give you an idea of how the modern NFL operates, where it gets things right, where it gets things wrong, and what it needs to be worried about as it embarks on a future where legalized gambling is sweeping the country and it imposes, I believe, some pretty important obligations on the NFL or it's going to have some problems in the future. Amazon and wherever books are sold, playmakers. Mike, there's got to be a book in this Watson case when it finally ends, whenever it ends. <laughs> oh, I, I, there, there may be multiple books and there are many chapters still to be written and it's fascinating to watch it unfold in real time. And hopefully some people make some good decisions and, uh, and we get this resolved so Browns fans can get back to focusing on football. Amen to that. Mike, thanks very much. All right. Thanks, pal.